Hello wine lovers, I'm Clement and you are watching Epicure TV. Epicure is the first social wine and spirit marketplace in Singapore and you can download our app now and start shopping over a selection of 2,000 wines and spirits rated and reviewed by Epicure users. So you can also visit our website at epicure.net and we have here the six most appreciated wines of this month and we have the pleasure of having Stephanie and Wayne uh, to explore them together. So thank you so much, Stephanie and Wayne, for being there today and taking the time to uh, be with us. Um, let's start with the first one, which is uh, Chardonnay from Macou La Roche Vineuse in France, from the domain uh, the Chateau de la Greffière. So Stephanie and Wayne. What do you think of this wine? Yeah. This was? Macron, first of all, um, it's a great appellation from um, southern part of Burgundy. And uh, it is right to have this kind of wine today because, unfortunately, when people think about Burgundy, they stick to the big appellation, which are in the Côte de Beaune or Côte de Nuit. I think this wine is just what it should be. Um, easy going, fresh, crispy, you know, it's 6 p.m. now, I feel thirsty and it's exactly the kind of one I would have because it's a fruit driving and you have a um, very, very straight backbones and it's, a, yes, very dynamic. It's, it's perfect for simple moments and for aperitif time, just mm -hmm. like now. Okay, <laughs> that's true. I think it, apart from being 6 p.m., um, it has the acidity that you can enjoy probably in the time of the day because it's always warm and it needs something that's bright and acidic and energetic. You feel really good about it. And apart from the fruits, there's also a touch of the salinity, that sea water kind of saltiness to it. Fine, that's okay. nice mineral to it. Okay, great. Yeah. What, what would you uh, recommend as uh, a food to pair with this one? For me, I would like to go with local food, especially what I call the fried Hokkien mee. The fried Hokkien noodles with prawns and seafood and stuff like it is savory and I think it has just nice with it. Yes. I'm hungry now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great, right, thank you. Um, so now we're gonna have the uh, River Road Wanyang from uh, Pyramid Valley, uh, Riesling from Marlborough in New Zealand. In the nose is very smoky. Um, you can uh, have a of minerality. A uh, hint of uh, white flowers as well. And uh, on the palate, it is not a dry wine. But what I do like about this one is that it's well balanced. You have uh, the sweetness to it, but it's really, really well balanced because you have the acidity behind. Um, so, yeah, it's beautiful. It is, a uh, weird thing to say. And apart from that, Marlboro has always been known for Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah, you know, Marlboro, Sauvignon Blanc, Cloud Ibe, Oyster Bay, Pinot Noir. I think a reasoning from Marlboro is actually a good change to the perception of Marlboro. And it is a good reasoning. Yeah, it's, it's simple. It is not a complex uh, reasoning, but it's really well done. Okay, great. What, so what, what would be the, the perfect food to, uh, to reveal this wine uh, even better? Yeah, often, um, I mean, even though I'm not local, I've been no, local okay. for Sorry. six years and I love local food. It is true that as a amour, <laughs> French lady <laughs> from France, often um, we used to think that reasoning, especially the sweet wine, will be uh, good with local food, but I think it's not true, it's not always the case. Yeah, no, but uh, with this one, which is actually not too sweet and high, quite uh, the high acidity behind, mm -hmm. um, actually I was thinking of going for the crispy squid, which is my favorite food. Ooh. I love the crispy squid <laughs> uh, because you will have the crispiness of the crispy squid, which will, will remind um, the sharpness of the wine. And at the same time, the crispy squid are uh, uh, cooked, I don't know how, but it's a bit like caramelized. No, it's actually a bit of a salted egg to it. Okay, yeah, the so it's like so soft. Right. So you have the crispiness and the softness, and actually, it's exactly what you get in this wine. Mm -hmm. So it would be a good pairing because you have the Crispiness reminding the sharpness of the wine and this softness reminding this roundness of the wine. So I think it would be great. Okay. Great, great sense. Um, now we're gonna continue with the red wine. So um, we will start with Pinot Noir from uh, Burgundy, uh, Chauvet Le Bon Le Bourgogne, 
uh, from the domain Joël Rémy to Tottenham Hill. So we can't expect from Joël Rémy to have a, a huge land, to have a big complexity. Uh, we can't expect Joël Rémy to be anything other than Joël Rémy, meaning simple but efficient. Mm -hmm. Food, crispiness, um, simple. Yes, and exactly what it is. Yes, that's right. What's this? Mm. Yes, I think that this one has a bit of a smokiness to it, a bit of rustic. Actually, we opened this quite a while back and mm. we were trying to taste it just now and it was a bit shy. So, very nice. Showing very nice. I think that food wise, I'll probably go with something called char siu. This is roasted pork mm. with um, honey glaze around it, so it's barbecue after that. So, you yeah, get a lot of sweetness and a smokiness to it. I think it will go well with it. Because the best char siu has a tinge of fat to it and then the tannins actually pair very well to yes. Uh, yeah, because the, the tannins need the fatness and proteins to slow down. We continue with uh, Lindis River 2008, a Pinot Noir also from Central Otago, New Zealand. I think it has a lot of fruits to it, um, but in many purposes it has a savory touch to it, and make it very tasty, very delicious. Actually. Yeah, it's probably well apart from the previous one that we tried, but I think it's what Central Otago is. We are pretty close to, and I shouldn't say that because people from Burgundy will shoot me for this, but we are pretty close to the style of the Chore Le Bon we had just before. Okay. Um, a simple Pinot Noir um, on fruit, crispiness, um, not a long length, not a big complexity. Um, so yes, an idea like uh, the pork that you mentioned before, otherwise we could even go for one of my favorite um, Chinese dishes, which is the um, second pig. Uh, oh. No, not the pig. I don't see the pig, but the, the duck. duck. Yeah, the, 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 the pigeon duck. The pigeon duck. Mm, yeah. With the skin, which is very crispy, yes. and um, and the toughness of uh, the meat needs sometimes some freshness behind, you know, to cut through. Yes, um, yes, delicious. And when you eat it with the kind of pancake that you have, yeah, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a. Um, it's kind of like that omelette kind of thing. Okay, thing? Okay. You put inside the uh, skin of the duck plus the onion spring. Yeah, onion spring. You can put a bit of. Uh, for some time, a little bit of uh, sugar. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, that's um, perfect. Mm -hmm. Now it's full of scent. Yeah. And um, you have a big palate on this one, even though it's from a really simple appellation. Mm -hmm. And again, um, this one is without any pretension. Again, it's this kind of easy going wine for sure. Uh, the kind of wine that you have always in your cellar, and then when you have a friend just dropping by in a nice saucisson in your fridge, you just uh, cut the saucisson, take some pomaham, and you drink this one, and it's perfect. Now I can really feel the bonnet on this one because you have this fatness at the back of the palate. Rich, showing through. Yes, there's definitely more bonnet than Syrah on it, you can say so. And the tannins are not rough at all, actually, they're pretty really soft. It's a simple wine again, but this is not pejorative. Being simple is not a problem, actually. You need wine for every day. So, and this is the kind of red wine I will have in my wine cellar all the time for, you know, any time, just a simple any moment. moment. Any good yeah. moment too. I mean, this wine must be paired with friends for sure. Okay. It's pretty for what I say. Yeah, it is. But <laughs> um, it's labeled as an IGP. No. Yes, it's an IGP. Yeah, a lot of people think that IGP is like one step below AOC. Yeah. But sometimes IGP gives the one maker the freedom to make things that he really wants to do. Yes, yes. And it makes better wine sometimes. Now, people should yes. be aware that AOP uh, um, or IGT or whatsoever yeah. doesn't define the quality exactly. of the wine at all. So, then uh, another Grenache and Syrah from uh, Chateau Signac in the appellation of Côte du Rhône, Village Chusclan, and 2006. It's almost the kind of wine that I listen instead of drink because you know you can feel the power of the sun of south of France. You can almost hear the cricket when you open this kind of wine. Um, you feel the garret behind, uh, you feel the dark fruit, and uh, and yet you feel like in Provence for sure. Even though we're not quite there yet, we are south of Rhone Valley. Um, after Montélimar, we are getting closer to Avignon, and yes, you feel in in Provence and, uh, and it's almost the wine that you listen mm -hmm. and um, yeah it is powerful you can feel the back of your mouth is uh, it's pretty warm generous um, I think you really need to eat to go with this wine for sure even though no, it's just a Côte du Rhône village um, I will go for a piece of meat mm -hmm. yeah and it's red meat oh, even nice. though the tannins are not too tough or even though it's not a huge complex wine I think I will enjoy to go with a simple Piece of red meat um, 
and just some, uh, you know, vegetables that you can, but you don't make them too cooked because you need the crispiness from them to bring yes. some relief to the pairing. But something is simple, pe black paper, a bit of uh, big salt on the top of your meat, and you're perfect with that. You don't need to go for complex meal because this one is not complex, but it is great and beautiful this way, so I need you. I think you always need to make a, a balance between the food and the wine, but what about local food? Mm. I, I certainly don't, don't hear the quickest because I don't know how, how she's like. <laughs> I do feel the Mediterranean sunshine is really warm and, and very nice and touch. What I think will go well with this is um, what I call braised meat. Nice. It means you cook this like a um, pork belly, braise it for yeah. several hours to get a creaminess and umami out of it. Mm. Add it with this. But though, because it's, it's just saltish, it's not particularly free, aromatic for the dish, it's not particularly um, fragrant driven one. But you pair with this, I think you just pair just mm. nice for the well. And you know, a good place in Singapore where you can. There's too many places. If I see that on video, I think people will just call you and cook for you. About it. Yeah. Yeah. Cook for you. Okay, right. <laughs> you never thought about where's the best place in Singapore for certain food because right. you go to war, you know, to go to the Okay, great. So, um, thank you so much, Stephanie, and Ruben, for uh, taking the time to be uh, with us uh, uh, today. And thank you for watching us, uh, for watching Epicure TV. Uh, Head over to uh, epicure.net for more information and don't forget to shop today in the app and for your coming events, dinner or parties. Enjoy experimenting and learning wine. There are no hard and fast rules. Mm -hmm. So thank you again for uh, watching us and I will catch you next time on Epicure TV.